OK, well, let's uh, get some reaction to all of this with uh, the security analyst and former UK Army officer, Charles Shoebridge, who's on the line for us. Good evening to you, Charles. Um, what do you make of the um, reaction we've heard internationally now to calls for uh, the, the cancellation of these huge arms contracts? It's no surprise, is it, really, that many countries who've got huge amounts of money involved are just saying, no, we, we are not going to cancel these contracts. Yes, you're absolutely right. There's no surprise whatsoever. And uh, also there'll be no surprise that notwithstanding that, as we've heard, for example, in the uh, Spanish case, in the Canadian case, only today blaming previous governments for, um, uh, for entering into those arms contracts, we can also expect, of course, these current governments to do exactly the same uh, because these uh, contracts are worth vast sums of money. But what's interesting, I think, is that um, today, uh, and, of course, since uh, Khashoggi was uh, killed in the way that he was, um, the emphasis has been on we should punish Saudi Arabia by cancelling these arms contracts or stop having arms contracts with Saudi Arabia because they killed this journalist. A far better or, or more um, important reason, one would say, not that, of course, his killing isn't a dreadful act, um, but, uh, of course, uh, a far more uh, important, many way think, is the consideration that actually what are these weapons going to be used for? And the fact is that in a very uh, large number of cases, these weapons, uh, particularly aircraft, bombs and shells and so on, are being used to carry out war crimes and uh, human rights violations. And that's extremely well documented. And here we're talking particularly, of course, about the situation in Yemen. And Britain, the United States in particular, of course, are entirely complicit in that situation. And of course, that uh, long preceded, in fact, all the way back to 2015, arguably earlier, long preceded this dreadful killing. And so uh, the focus, perhaps, uh, of course, people are understandable uh, in their want to take advantage of the Khashoggi situation to further raise these issues. But Quite rightly, of course, they should be mentioning what's actually happening in Yemen, what these weapons are being used for, and largely they're being used to kill civilians. Well, why do you think it's received so little attention? I mean, it has received attention, but I always think there's very little call for action. When, it, when Yemen is discussed, it's always looking at the horror of Yemen, but very little about the blame or who supplies what. Um, and you don't really come away with much impression of, of who is responsible or where the weapons come from. Why do you think it is like that and why do you think it just doesn't seem to change? We often see headlines, well actually not often as you say, but occasionally we see headlines uh, in the West, in the US and the UK media saying Yemen, the forgotten war. Of course they neglect to mention that the reason it's forgotten is because the media themselves have chosen not to report it. And it must have been a choice not to report it because almost universally amongst the mainstream US, UK media, there has been, if not a blackout, certainly very limited coverage of the atrocities that are occurring there, not just um, from the bombing campaign itself, although that has killed thousands of civilians. And let's not forget that even um, uh, you know, independent uh, bodies such as the UN and others have reported that upwards of 40% or so of all military strikes by the Saudi-led alliance in uh, Yemen are against civilian targets. That's a, a colossal figure. But certainly the coverage of that, plus the blockade, which um, is exacerbating and many would argue creating a situation of even famine that's going to affect millions of people in Yemen itself and killing many people, arguably more than the bombing itself, all of this created um, uh, by a Saudi coalition, or, and certainly worsened by them, um, in which the US and the UK particularly and other Western powers that are providing weapons, refueling, logistics, intelligence, support to the Saudi alliance are complicit in. Um, and of course, as you say, it's had very little coverage compared to the coverage, for example, of alleged crimes by what might be called uh, US-UK enemies, such as Syria, such as, for example, alleged crimes by Russia and killing civilians in Yemen, uh, beg your pardon, in Syria, and so on. Now, of course, in any military campaign, unfortunately, civilian deaths will occur. But the scale, the degree to which they're occurring in Yemen is much greater as a proportion of casualties than we've seen in, um, for example, Syria. And yet, uh, despite the fact, or arguably because of the fact of British and American involvement in those deaths and in that suffering, of course, it's received relatively little coverage uh, in the US UK media. Now, to some degree, of course, with Khashoggi's killing in respect of him being a very famous uh, and prominent Western journalist, that is now being used increasingly, of course, in the US media, only in the UK media, only in the last few weeks, as now a weapon to beat Saudi Arabia with. Uh, but, of course, it's very late in the day 
for three years this war has been raging and these weapons have been used uh, in this immoral way, in this illegal way, and yet Britain and America have absolutely continued to supply them. In fact, the supplies are increasing. OK, Charles, look, we're going to have to leave it there. We've uh, run out of time, but uh, good to talk to you tonight. That was Charles Shoebridge, security analyst and former UK Army officer. Thank you.